Encouraging sign for the Australian share market. There was a lot of bad news to absorb. We saw that Italian bond auction overnight and the 10-year yields hitting above 6% for the first time since January. And of course, those Spanish bond yields also rising. And yet the open seemed to be the most pessimistic for the market. In fact, if we have a look at the intraday graph, you can see that throughout this session we improved and we closed near the highs of the session. We saw the same type of pattern with the Aussie dollar. If we have a look at the Aussie dollar over the last 24 hours, this is what it looked like. You can see that at bottom once at 10 a.m. when the market opened and throughout the day we saw an improvement there. Part of it does seem to be a lot of fund managers do seem a lot more comfortable buying closer to those 4,000 point levels. So we do see some buying volumes coming in. In fact, if we have a look at the 30 day chart, you can see the exact levels that we were at this morning is where we've bounced off in the past. So that level just under that 4,040 point mark does seem to be a strong level for the Aussie share market. Finally, some good volumes going through the market. This is the first of the day of the week that we've managed to crack that $4 billion mark. Not surprising given that it is also the end of the month. So we probably did see some end of month activity as well. But $5.8 billion worth of stock being traded. In the morning, it was very pessimistic. All sectors lower with the worst being that energy and the material space. But by the end of the session, instead of 2% losses for the likes of BHP and Rio, we're looking at BHP down by 0.6%, Rio Tinto down by 0.8%. And in fact, we saw the industrial, the uh, consumer discretionary staples, the healthcare, as well as the information technology and the utility space all finishing in the black. So we started off quite pessimistic, but in the end, not a bad session. But altogether, the market really still being driven by that event risk coming out of Europe. And that's really what's bubbling along in the background. Do you see that the, the attractiveness beyond simply um, a store and protection of wealth move away from bonds? Does that quicken a potential move back into equities as people do start to look for some sort of return on their money? Well, that tells you that fundamentals isn't driving investments, but it is safe haven assets which are very much in demand at the moment. And you can see that through sector performance or through the performance of different assets and the record low yields that we are seeing in things like the 10-year U.S. Treasury is all safe haven assets. So investors, rather than chasing capital growth at the moment, are looking for those safe havens. If we have a look at what's driving the fear in the market. It is event-driven fear. It's not the fundamentals driving the market. It's fears that we are going to see the situation in Europe worsen and if we have a look at the monthly return in May of the Australian share market we have seen a decline um, in our market of 7.3 percent that makes it the worst performance since May 2010 and there's been only three months since 2007 where we have seen these type of losses in a month that's uh, September 2008 October 2008 and May 2010 and if we have a look at what's turned around market sentiment and turned around market performance it's been the policy policy response to these uh, troublesome events uh, that has really turned around sentiment in the market. And to be sp specific, it's been things like um, in 2008, September, October, or well, November, we saw quantitative ease in QE1 coming out of the US, which really turned around market sentiment there. If we have a look at May 2010, the concerns around Greece, we saw the European Financial Stability Fund being um, being uh, created there to create a firewall for some of those peripheral countries which were under, under trouble. So yes, we are seeing a lot of negative returns in the marketplace. Investors looking for safe havens. What's going to turn that around? We're looking at the policy responses and we want to get a clearer picture of that. That should be better news for equities. But as you've illustrated, Julia, I mean, those policy responses by their nature have, have all been short-term fixes. I mean, they give a bit of a, a sugar rush, if you like, to, to risk-weighted assets. But as the fact that we've had to continue to have other ones suggests that longer term, they simply don't work. And that's the problem. We have seen a lot of money printing, a lot of stimulus, and that's caused, caused some misalignment as well. And if you cast your mind back to some of the consequences of QE1 and QE2 and money printing, it isn't, isn't, wasn't just a low US dollar, but also inflation in things like commodities and food prices. We saw a massive run up in risk assets, in food prices as well, and that caused huge amounts of problems around the world. So I guess part of it is a problem that uh, unleashing a huge amount of capital on global markets markets at the moment can cause and the other side of the cause uh, the other question that you mentioned James is does it un does it fix the underlying problems or does it just try and deal with the symptoms only to have the problem flare up once again